Hey everybody, back again. Happy uh, Wednesday, happy hump day. Here we are um, doing another Facebook Live for you. We've got a really good guest, Carl from Sea Life Cameras. So we're going to bring Carl in and, uh, and we're going to talk about some stuff with cam underwater cameras, video lighting, uh, photography, things like that. So hope you guys are really interested and, uh, and bring on your questions. Let me get Carl in here. Hey, Carl, Mike. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you over there in Chicago? Ah, it's cold out here, man. How about the East Coast? How's the, how's the weather over there? Uh, trending warmer. Uh, well, but good. I will be in Chicago at the end of the week at the Our World Underwater Chicago show. I'll see you there as well, Mike. Yeah, if, if any of you didn't know, this weekend is a Chicago show, like Carl was saying. Our World Underwater is this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. We will be there. Carl will be there. Come out. You can see some of the cameras and everything in person. Talk to Carl, myself, or uh, any of the other great people here at Dive Right in Scuba. So, Carl, um, I know we got some prizes here, right, that are. people are going to be giving away. So, every all you viewers out there, make sure you're commenting and asking some questions because at the end of this segment, we are going to obviously give away a prize with a randomizer like we always do. And that prize is a Sea Dragon Mini 900 Floodlight. That sea life so graciously is going to uh, to give away to somebody. So that's right. Ask those questions, bring on those comments, so you can get yourself into that random drawing at the end of this segment. Um, Carl, so you've been with Sea Life a, a while. You know, why don't you fill us in a little bit and and everybody out there on your position with Sea Life and give us a little rundown of the company and the history going on over there. Fantastic. Yeah, Mike. Uh, well, I'm the uh, sales manager here at Sea Life Cameras. I've been in this position for about six years. I started off at Sea Life as the uh, technician, worked my way up into the uh, in -sales, uh, in -sales, uh, inside sales position and then got into the sales manage management position. Uh, sea Life started back in 1996. We started with the old uh, camera in a bag. Uh, and then quickly went up from there. Sea Life noticed a need for a uh, an inexpensive camera for people who could actually afford to take uh, pictures and, and do photography. So we started off with the Reef Master back in uh, 1998. I had one of those when I was diving. Did yeah. you? I, I, I know a lot of people that have those, but uh, oh, yeah. so, I think yeah, out, out of all that film, we maybe have four good pictures still. Then you're a great photographer. Then you got four out of four out of what twelve, four out of thirteen, four out of twenty. But uh, that, that you're doing pretty good. But you know, we uh, it, it got the um, you know the the uh, more the beginner photographer uh, beginner photographer into underwater photography. Uh, there are units that were selling in the Kona systems, but were selling in the thousands. Uh, you could get in for uh, about $300 on a camera. Then we quickly realized that we needed some light or a strobe. So we went in that direction, got a strobe. And then in the uh, year 2001, we came out with the first underwater digital camera. It was the DC100, a whopping one megapixel camera. And at that time, you used CF cards. I think the memory was in kilobits, kilobits, you know, <laughs> not mega, megabytes, but like kilo or gigabytes. It was yeah, I don't think they were in gigabytes yet. I think it was like uh -huh. 256 uh -huh. megabytes. Because I think I still but, have uh, yeah. So after that, we just climbed, started climbing. And in 2006, we released the DC 500, which became Time Magazine's uh, uh, invention of the year. And that was fantastic. That really launched us. And we were on the cover of Time Magazine. And then uh, we started even uh, progressing even more. We we're the first company to come out with a uh, housed camera. And that was the Reef Master. It was a six megapixel camera at the time. But it was revolutionary because it was a camera and housing combined. Very rugged camera. And uh, geez, I keep going with the history of sea life, but you know, uh, we'll just jump to what we have today. And uh, what we have today is the brand new DC 2000 came out uh, about two years ago. I don't know if you could see that, but uh, fantastic camera. This is the camera people always wanted us to build. It uses a one inch Sony uh, 20 megapixel CMOS sensor. 
uh, one inch sensor compared to a lot of two thirds sensors on the market. So it has more pixels per, per, uh, per uh, the sensor. So if you talk a one inch sensor and you have 20 megapixels or 20 me million pixels on that sensor, uh, this pixel is going to be much larger and it's going to let more light in, which is key to underwater photography. So this camera, uh, the reason why I'm saying it's the camera everybody wants us to build is that you have, it's very simple to use, but you have a, uh, <clears throat> you have some automatic modes and then you could go full manual with apertures from uh, 1.8 all the way to f11 with shutter speeds from 15 now, seconds what, why do why did somebody want that right so a lot of these people may not you know they yeah. may not may mean anything to them what does that do for them as a photographer or videographer why do they want that well the reason being you want to be able to control your shots i mean depth of field comes with your aperture setting so maybe i wanted to have you know your beautiful face in the picture and i might want to blur everything out Aww. so i'm able to set or, or vice versa, to be honest with you. That's more way, the way we're going to do it now. But, uh, but you know, it gives the, the customer complete control over the camera. So you're not, the camera's not guessing what you want. You're telling the camera what you want. And uh, we've had some fantastic results. Not only that, but the camera also shoots in raw. And anything you want in a camera, this camera has it. And it'll take four hours to go through the whole camera. But I tell you what, on our website, uh, www.clife-cameras.com. Uh, if you go to our website, you can see all the information on the camera, and you'd also uh, take a look at our uh, online tutorials, and we have quite a few of them. And this is something I urge all of our dealers to do. Show the people. We have a Great Pictures Made Easy DC2000. We also have How to Take Pictures Using the DC2000 by a fantastic, uh, world-renowned underwater photographer by the name of Tobias Frederick. He, uh, if you go to our Facebook page every week, Tobias goes to some exotic location, takes some pictures, uh, and then Incredible writes about the pictures. Picture. Incredible pictures. Yeah, well, yeah, and uh, that's what you get. You know, that's what you get with this camera. You go from the automatic modes for the most simple modes into, like I said, the manual modes. Uh, so what, what would you say um, are some of the tips uh, if you had to give people two big tips of what you see wrong, I'm sure a lot of people send you guys photos and say, what did I do wrong? I don't know. This looks horrible. Your camera's wow. horrible, and it's really not, right? It's the, <laughs> the tool in the hand. Well, we never did that, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, if you well, had to give people a couple quick tips, what would it be? Yeah. You know, what, what, what would well, you say? What do you see the most of? I think the biggest issue is when people set up the camera, they set it up incorrectly. One, they don't set it up for the underwater mode. Uh, they go right into automatic. And if I can bring this over here with the camera, what am I, okay. You have the uh, this dial, okay. I'm not gonna be able to see this because I'm blind as a bat, but I'm looking for the fish icon. Well, that's the first thing you do is turn on the camera, move the dial to the fish icon, I think that's it. Anyway, you turn to the fish icon and then you go into the menu button, the menu mode. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, once you get there, you scroll one down. And once you're in the menu, your focus and flash button will be your up and down keys. So I would scroll one down to those underwater scene modes, push this OK button right here to enable that selection. Okay, and then here are the automatic modes you have a, a dive snorkel, external flash, or external light mode. These are the automatic modes. So that is your first, uh, that's your first step in the process. So I'm just gonna select dive, and I'm gonna push okay. All right, now I'm gonna push menu to get out, and what you should see is that the screen looks very red. Trust me, it's red. Uh, so, you would use this mode if you did not have a light or an external flash, okay? Uh, and then it's a very basic camera. All you're going to do is you're going to select your focus mode, which is the second most, uh, uh, the biggest issue I see as well. People, uh, they don't select the correct focus mode. Uh, so with this camera, you have a automatic focus mode, which goes from, has a distance from six inches to infinity. That's the one I tell people who even on the most. Just leave it there and, and forget about it. Six inches to infinity. 
Yeah, and then once you're there, you, you almost have the whole thing beat. Now, now all you have to do is press it down halfway. The camera focuses ultra fast, and uh, you press it the rest of the way to take the picture once you get the green square. Very easy camera to use. So Sure. Uh, so what tips would you yeah. give somebody, though, regardless of that camera? You know, what, what do you see wrong yeah. with some photos? You know, are, oh. people, are they getting Photo too tip. far away from the subject? Are they not using the right light? Oh, yeah. Know? What kind of general Thank tips you. Would, you, would you suggest yeah. to people? Well, the best tip I can give you uh, for underwater photography is to get close. And if you think you're close, get closer because you know how it is when you're underwater, everything seems 33% uh, closer than it actually is. So yeah, don't bother with a shot that's four or five feet away because you wanna shrink the water volume between you and the subject. There's literally a lot of stuff floating around in the water that's gonna make for a terrible picture. The second thing I would do is if you're taking a picture and say it's a frogfish, okay? Now these things are kind of tough to see and they end up hiding in coral and they just blend in. Don't take a picture of maybe a one, and this is all subjective, but a more, you know, you could take a picture of the uh, frog fish in the coral, but get some, get some contrast to that picture. Move your body around and get, maybe get that picture of the frog fish with some, uh, the ocean behind it. It's a nice blue water. So it gives contrast. Never shoot down, always shoot, uh, shoot slightly up. Okay, that is another tip I would use. But uh, we have a lot of tips, like I said, on our website. It's the Great Pictures Made Easy DC 2000. Please go to it. It's, it's absolutely free, and it's under the Discover Sea Life section on our website. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, when they see underwater photos that somebody else took, it looks like that shark or that reef is 5, 8, 10 feet away. What they're not realizing yeah. is through the use of the wide-angle lens, they are usually inches away from that creature, even though they're getting um, the whole shot. So... Big right. tip, everybody out there: get close and uh, and lighting get is close. a big part of it too. You know, but definitely oh, get close. Absolutely, uh, very good. I mean, the we have the color correction that's in the dive and snorkel, and you also you could select your uh, do your own uh, manual white balance, but all that works pretty good to about fifty feet. Once you get below fifty feet. You don't have enough ambient light to run that color correction. That's where you have to come in with the lights. Okay, and we have plenty of lights. Uh, give me a minute and let me show you a couple of them. Sure. Uh, the new ones we have. <clears throat> hey, if, you're, if you've been asking some questions out there, don't worry. We're going to get back to you. Let's. Uh, we'll get through some of these lights, Carl, and then we'll knock out yeah. some of these uh, right. viewer questions. If I just keep rambling on, just kind of nudge me forward, all right? Oh, so you're good. I'll move as fast as I can. This is the uh, our brand new light, beautiful light. It's called the Sea Dragon uh, 3000. What makes this light very unique is that it has a sensor in it, uh, a, a sensor that performs two functions. It has an automatic brightness control, which is very unique to our lights, and also has a flash detection. Now, this light also has a stealth mode. We call it a stealth mode because it has two red LEDs on, on the uh, light. So once you put it into that mode, uh, if you're doing a night dive, you could creep up on the fish, uh, in underwater photography, you're doing a night dive. You need light for the camera to focus. So this red light emits enough light so the camera could focus on the subject. Uh, you take the picture, and you're probably going to set it up with an external flash. That's how we usually do it. Once this flash goes off, the red light will go off so you don't get red in your picture, and you get a fantastic uh, photo. Okay? Now, I'm not going to shine it into your eyes. It's going to blow out the screen, but it, it has 100%. I'm just going to 100% power, 50, 25. And here's this automatic brightness control. As I get closer to the subject, it's automatically going to dim down. You're probably not going to, I'm probably blinding people. Okay, trust me on this, it's dimming down. And you get further away, it brightens up. Okay, so the next mode would be that stealth mode. There's that red uh, red uh, light mode. Hold now, it up just a little bit, Carl. Hold it up just a little bit. Can you see that? Figure that out. So here it is. Now, so I'm going to turn on this flash real quick, and you'll see what happens with this red light. I hope this isn't blinding anybody. But watch what happens to this light. Did 
You see it shut off, shuts off for one second, comes back on. Now that, that could also be disabled as well, because if you're shooting video you and at night, you definitely don't want that light going off, but it's a very easy, you could uh, disable that function uh, very easily underwater. So that's the 3000 lumen light. It's gonna come with a single tray, a grip, uh, and it's also gonna come with, of course, the battery charger in this nice little EVA case like this. Perfect. Okay, that's going to be for four ninety nine. All right. All right. Well, let's get so moving. Uh, let's get on some questions here. Todd, how you doing? Yeah, yeah, Todd, we're going to be Todd, how you doing? Paul, uh, nice to uh, you to join us. Laura, bring on your questions. You know, hopefully some of the tips we already went over will help you. Um, but you know, bring on some other ones and and let's make them into that gold. Nicole, glad you love your DC two thousand. You know, let us know. Um, what you think of it in the comments? And uh, Carl, she's wondering, is there anything new coming out? What do you guys got on the horizon? Anything well, we're always working on something. something. What's it? We're always working on something. I mean, I know we're called Sea Life Cameras, but really we're an imaging company. So we have photo, I mean, we have cameras. Uh, we also have lighting, uh, lenses, and accessories. Uh, lighting, maybe look at uh, look more towards the middle, the end of the year for more, some a little bit more lighting, and it's probably going to be towards the dive lighting. As far as cameras, really can't talk about the cameras right now, but we're like I said, we're always innovating. Check check us out towards the end of the year. I'm sure we'll yeah, have. Yeah, we'll something. keep you posted, Nicole. As soon as we're here, we will let you guys know. We'll have another Facebook Live. There you go. Yeah, why not? Todd was saying he used to have a reef, reef master. Nathan wished he had one. Yeah, they were the bomb back in the day. I mean, <laughs> they were still so much more compact than anything else you could get other than the $2 disposable underwater camera that went down to like three feet and jammed up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, Laura is saying she has a micro 2.0 and would love to learn what settings to use other than auto to make her pictures better. Well, first of all, um, you don't want to put that camera in auto. You want to put that camera in either dive mode, snorkel mode when being used underwater, or external light mode, okay? If you leave it in auto and you go diving, there's not going to be any color correction, so all you're going to get are green and blue pictures. So set the camera to, and it's very easy, go through that easy setup, and make the selection either dive or snorkel. Dive is from 25 feet to 50 feet. Snorkel is from you know zero feet to twenty five feet. Perfect. We're at a light; you have to worry about it. Yeah, Trent still uses his old DC one thousand. That's awesome, William. Nice camera. Yeah, nice Robert camera. is wondering what is the smallest camera you guys make? What uh, what do you got? Is it um? It's the Micro two point oh, right? Micro two point oh, right now. That's correct. Todd's wondering, and I know some of these answers, but do your cameras do video also? At all of our cameras do video as well as as well as stills, uh, 1080p up to 60 frames a second. Yeah, and and Todd, that's why a lot of people go with these versus oh, GoPros. Correct. Yeah, uh, they go with these versus GoPros because you get really good video, but you also get the really good photo opportunity as well as a lot of this stuff built into it, like the red filtering and you know just being a specific to dive camera as well. Absolutely, and Scott, land camera. At that. Yeah, Scotty's got a DC twelve hundred. He's loving it. And uh, Robert's <laughs> wondering, what is the max depth and distance for clarity with the cameras? What do you What do you recommend? Well, I mean, you have a max depth of two hundred feet, and I again, clarity that's going to depend on the visibility in the water. Uh, and again, get close. If you think you're close, get closer, because you again, you really want to shrink the distance between you and that subject. You want to shrink that water volume. So all that stuff floating around in the water, that's going to show up in your pictures and video. So yeah. get close. Get close. Nicole is saying she has uh, some shutter delay issues. What can she do to speed it up? From my experience, I know a big part of that can sometimes be the SD card that you're running, right? Where it just can't file that fast enough. Well, depending on the camera. Now, Yeah, Nicole, uh, let us know what camera you got. If she has to... 1400. I'm not sure I, what she has. Right. Yet. Nicole, let us know a little bit what your camera you have. But is there yeah. any way to speed that up normally? Well, 
Well, here's the thing. The DC-2000, we we, uh, we tackled that issue with the DC-2000. It has a much better lens than the 1400 and the other cameras uh, before that. Uh, all autofocus cameras have shutter lag. To what degree depends on the quality of the sensor. Now, the DC-2000 has a very high quality sensor. So uh, shutter lag is uh, nominal at that point. Very quick focus. She so, was saying that's what she tested last year was a DT, DC 2000 was noticing some shutter lag. Well, again, that's going to, when you talk about shutter, shutter lag, you want to talk about some other things as well. Do you have enough light to focus is the first thing. Secondly, is there enough contrast between the subject and its background? Uh, sometimes uh, the sensors have a tough time distinguishing what, what the subject is. The third thing is, Make sure you have the correct focus mode set. Autofocus on the DC-2000 is six inches to infinity. Now, people make a big mistake. They put the camera in macro, and that has an end distance. So if I put the camera in macro, my shooting distance now is going to change to four inches to 20 inches, right? Uh, so if you're shooting something more than 20 inches away, that camera's not going to focus. It'll keep giving you this red square. So, uh, again, select the correct focus distance and make sure you have enough light and make sure there's contrast between the subject and the, uh, and the actual background. Good stuff. Philip is wondering what would be good for Caribbean water and what would be good for the Great Lakes? <laughs> well, oh. <laughs> uh, the DC-2000, as well as the Micro 2.0, uh, has the uh, the uh, green water uh, white balance feature, okay? So both cameras have that. So if you're diving in the rivers and the lakes, your white balance selection will be green water. That's a preset white balance. Uh, the Micro 2.0, like I said, the Micro 2.0 and the DC 2000 uh, have that feature. However, the DC 2000 takes it further and gives you that manual white balance. Uh, what you would do, you would put in the manual white balance feature. There's kind of an on-screen on tutorial, not tutorial, but it'll beat you through it. And it's shooting the old white slate at an angle. So this is what white looks like at this depth, and you'll get color back in your picture. Cody's wondering about the uh, trade-up program. Do you still offer that? Cody must have a camera. Saying hey, sure. and what the best thing to do is go see your dealer on that one. Uh, work it through a dealer. And uh, Cody, give do. me a call. We'll take care of you. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, Robert's wondering if you guys have any real-time video. I want to kind of clarify that. It's not a trade-up program. What sometimes happened with Sea Life, what we noticed, if people had the older cameras and we can't repair it, we would uh, offer the dealer a trade-up price and that he just carries on over to the end user, the customer. So that's the process we like people to take. We can't fix it. Go to the dealer, and we'll we'll work something out. Right. Uh, Robert's okay. wondering if you have anything with real time video options. I'm assuming maybe he's talking about like uh, depth or water temperature or anything like that. No, no, we do not have that on our on our cameras. Gail's wondering no. if you have anything small and rugged enough to just clip off during the dive, which it would be the micro, right? That's right, buddy. You put it right in your uh, DC. There you go. <laughs> Gail, here you go. If you wanted to see, uh, here's one that's been clipped off quite a few times. Uh, um, and for my fist size comparison there, hopefully that's close enough. You can see it's about the size of a fist. So nice and compact. Uh, and there is no external extra housing and there's no small camera. It's all built in. It's one thing easy piano key buttons and everything so gail this is it it clips off it can take a beating it takes a beating really does it's a very it's rugged cool. camera high quality too that uses a 16 megapixel sony cmos sensor very high quality oh yeah no we uh, don't have to worry about flying man. Funny story about this one. When we were out on Lake Michigan doing some dives, uh, one of our dive masters decided to set it down to unhook the mooring. And when he got back yeah. on the boat and we left, he realized he left it underwater. Well, we didn't get back out to that dive site for a couple weeks and went back. It was still in the same exact spot. 
took a couple pictures and brought it back up to the surface. So being submerged for a very, 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 very long time does not hurt it either. Well, yeah, it's what it's what it's what it's yeah. Fantastic little camera. Yeah. Philip is wondering what a good starter camera for recreational diving is. Probably the one we just showed, but Carl, what do you uh, what do you think? Yeah, I mean that's there's uh the, the, the Micro 2.0 is very easy to use. Now, that's a fixed focus camera, Mike. So you have to be at least 12 inches away from your subject to get a good picture. But it's sh no shutter lag. It's click, take the picture. Click, take the picture. Uh, we also have lenses for that camera. We have close-up lenses because the, the 2.0 has a very wide field of view. Okay? It's 130 degrees, which could be narrowed electronically in the camera. Okay, but very simple to use. Click, take a picture. Now, with that being said, I know, Mike, you're a boater. You've been through boats. And, uh, you know, when I bought my first boat, I bought a 16 footer. I quickly found out that I wanted to go to 24 feet or bigger. So uh, it's kind of the same thing with the camera. Sometimes you start here, but, you know, am I going to continue on with this? Am I? Is this something I'm interested in and continue on with? If that question, if the answer to that question is yes, you might want to just jump into the DC 2000 because it's it's a very easy to use camera, but it's a camera you can grow with. Good, good stuff, good stuff. Laura is saying she'd love to see some up see some updated video tutorial tutorials that focus on specific camera features and that some of the Sea Life videos just seem more like a sales pitch instead of a real like hands on uh, help you nitty gritty um you know feature tutorial well if you go to our website we do have a uh video we call it an unboxing video of the dc 2000 and it's basically a video of our, our one of our owners bjorn his beautiful hands and he he does an unboxing video and he talks about the the all the features on the camera it's about 35 minutes long but it's, it beats reading a manual, and you could follow along with it as you're watching the video. That's there right you. on our website under Discover Sea Life. All right, Michael is wondering, what is the deepest depth rating that your camera holds? Um, it says it's good to 200, okay, 200 feet. But, you know, there are tolerances in engineering, plus or minus 10%. So I would imagine go to 220 feet. Uh, the problem is, uh, Mike, when you get to the deeper depths, it's not like the camera is going to leak. Just all the buttons start pushing in at depth and just renders the camera inoperable. Yeah. But you won't have a problem once you get back up to depth. Yeah, it all starts working again. Oh, Carrie yeah. is probably what a good starter camera is. Carrie, we kind of talked about that. Both of their cameras are really good depending on what level you want to jump into and, uh, and mm -hmm. how advanced of a photographer you want to be right off the bat. But their cameras are all meant to give high features with very easy user interaction to make it easy for you to take good pictures, which as a novice Absolutely. is something that is very important. You know what I mean? You want, you want that easy button, and that's really what they've done with their cameras. Yeah, and all of our cameras, uh, Mike, as you'll notice we have the large piano keys. We don't have a bunch of buttons that you can, you know, you can use gloves, and I know that's important over in your neck of the woods, huh. diving with gloves. You could easily navigate uh, through the camera using gloves via these large piano keys. Uh, I don't know where that Micro 2.0 went, but if you could show your Micro 2.0, you could see the large piano keys on that as well. All your navigation are going to be through those three buttons. Very simple to use, and the shutter button. Mike Benoit is wondering, what is the highest resolution available currently? Highest resolution video? Uh, he just said for resolution DC. available. It's, okay, for pictures, it's 20 megapixel. Um, for video, it's 1080p at 60 frames a second. Robert is wondering if it comes in blue. We had Dive Right on last week, and everybody wanted some blue fins. So uh, could he get yeah. one of these cameras in blue if he wanted? No, but he could spray paint it. I mean, there I don't know. <laughs> Robert, we will, we will get it painted blue for you before you get it. <laughs> I'm sure Mike will be able to paint that for you. There will be no, we, it may not hold up more than a dive or two, but it will be blue when you get it. I promise. <laughs> um, Scott is wondering if it's okay to remove the snap on macro underwater or if you should only just do that on the surface. Well, it's all of our lenses, Mike. 
are uh, wet lenses. So you need to put them on under water. You need to burp the lens. So all of our lenses will just- Oh, hold that up a little bit, just so people can see, there we go. Yeah, they're all, hold on, let me get this out of the way and knock myself out. Try so to go all to the other side with that, because my head is in the way. What am I doing this way? There you go, right there is perfect. And then you just pop on the lens. And then th this is how all of our lenses go on. So the, the answer is yes, you need to put it on underwater. You do not want to get air trapped between the uh, lens port and then the other side of the lens. We don't get aligned with the pictures. Yeah, water yeah. is good there. That's for sure. Yes, you definitely need it. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Jeremy, hi, how you doing? Uh, Joe is interested in taking photos for memories. What camera do you recommend? Hmm. Oh, see the micro 2.0 or DC 2000. Uh, yeah. Again, Mike, you know, when you, Jeremy, you need to ask yourself where you want to go with your photography. Uh, the DC 2000 is a fantastic camera. And by the way, uh, the DC 2000 camera is waterproof to 60 feet on its own. Okay. So yeah, that one does have uh, a separate housing and camera. And here it is. And it's a fantastic camera. So uh, the thing is, it is waterproof to 60 feet, but I urge people to use the housing that comes with the camera. Uh, first reason being is that look how small these controls are. I don't know. Can you, there we go. See how small the, those are? Now, look how big they are on the housing. See how large those controls are? I don't know about you. I'm getting a little older, and, I, and geez, underwater, forget it. I can't see anything, you know? Uh, so it makes for easy navigation. All right. Um, all right. Joe, I would say I it really depends question. on the quality of photos that you're wanting to get both of them are going to do great for you i don't think you're going to be disappointed in either no, but uh, everybody not has a different eye for what they think is good and and what is good yeah. enough so it just depends on what your That's eye right. is you know Art so is very subjective so yeah you know dustin is wondering what light, you, uh, That's it. yeah dustin's wondering what lights have worked the best a uh, big blue dive ride or whatever with this camera. And, and really, you know, we kind of went over it a little bit earlier. You guys have the most innovative lights to go with that system. That's right. I mean, you could use our lights on any system out there. And the bonus with our lights, it comes part of this Flex Connect system, okay? Uh, whereas anywhere you see a red button, you push it in and you can easily disassemble the product okay now all of our lights are true lumen true burn time and true beam angle okay uh i'm just saying that i'm not going any further with that so uh, you know you get what you pay for with sea life and uh, you're gonna have a fantastic experience with it. absolutely Jack is wondering, good starter camera slash lighting system for beginners you know we, i think we've hit on that a few times jack um, it really depends on you, but Sea Life does have a lot of packages. We've got them all on our website um, at every different price point. The best thing to do might be to give us a call. We can help, uh, you know, obviously ask a few questions where you're diving, how you're diving, what you're wanting to shoot, and help figure out exactly what's going to be the best system for you. But they do have some really good systems, uh, and we've got them all on our website, so you can check those out. And, and they really have something to fit every budget, uh, especially with the lighting options, video or strobe, too. So. You know, Jack, feel free to give us a call. We can definitely help you out and, and get you into that. Uh, the phone number is obviously on the website. Um, nice Todd, job with your website, by the way. What's that? It's a nice job with your website, by the way. Oh, thank uh, you. I do you have all the information there. Fantastic. Yeah. How you have all the products there. So good job. Try to. Uh, Todd is wondering, <laughs> what is your brightest lumen video light? Okay. We have a 4,500 lumen dot. There she is. And so compact. Is, yeah, yeah, well, it's, uh, it is compact. Uh, I mean, this is 4,500 true lumen. It uses a, it has 120 degree beam angle. Okay. Um, has a color rendering index. And what that is, it's an index that goes from zero to a hundred. 
100 would be the color temperature or ambient light. Color, color temperature of the sauna we consider ambient light, the best light to shoot in. This light comes in at a CRI of uh, 96 out of 100. So you're really mimicking ambient light. It's 4,500 lumen. I'm not going to shine it at you. I'll turn it on. You hold it in, turn it on. You have 100%. All I'm doing is pushing this button here. It goes down to 50, 25. Then it goes into that automatic brightness control like the 3000 has, okay? Uh, it also has the flash detection as well. So it'll shut down when it recognizes the flash. People love this light. It looks like if you're doing a night dive, it looks like a tractor trailer coming at you. So uh, be careful. Don't shine it in other people's eyes. It, uh, it's not, that wouldn't be a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Laura, Laura I, had another question. Just uh, she's wondering if her photos will be improved using any of the manual settings, such as setting the ISO, the EV, sharpness, or metering. Well, that depends. You really need to know what all those modes do. Okay, I tell you, people take fantastic pictures in the automatic modes. You know, as far as ISO, uh, I let I usually leave that on auto. Okay, the camera's going to figure it out. It's it's designed to figure it out, and uh, don't don't waste your time overthinking things. Now, what I would do, if you wanted to get into to increase your your, your photography skills, it's all about uh, you know practice, 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 practice on land. Find out what best works for you on land, and then kind of adopt these things for underwater use when you spend the money go on these dives. But if I was to do, uh, I wouldn't mess around the ISO. I wouldn't around, mess around the exposure. Uh, metering really comes into play when you're shooting something uh, that kind of blends in, like a white subject on a sandy bottom. Uh, so uh, with the metering, you, we have a center metering, we have average metering, and we have spot metering. Uh, the default will be uh, an average metering. So I kind of let things flow by themselves you know and i i'm okay i'm not a great photographer i've, I've had my moments <laughs> so, sean is uh, wondering we haven't really hit on the new wide angle lens he's wondering if we can uh, speak a little about the new wide angle lens. sure sure absolutely thanks for the question like I, i'll start rambling on so you have to cut me off fantastic here it is fantastic lens uh the beauty about this lens it, it on the dc 2000 it's going to increase your field of view by 100%, okay? Um, it's domed, as you can see, and that's filled with nitrogen, okay? That, that helps prevent fog. Now, the big issue with a lot of lenses out there is that a lot of wide-angle lenses have a sweet spot, whereas the uh, only in the middle will it focus, okay? When you go out towards the corners, it gets a little blurry and out of focus. This lens is sharp edge-to-edge. -edge. Okay, sharp edge to edge, and it's a five element glass lens. That means there's five pieces of glass in there. It is pretty heavy, but uh, if you're thinking about getting this lens, go order it right over there from Dive Right in Scuba. And when you're thinking about a lens, you also want to think about a uh, how, what are you going to do with this lens if you want to take macro shots, right? So we have a lens caddy, a universal lens caddy. You'll pop the lens off the uh, of the uh, housing and just pop it onto this lens caddy. Uh, definitely uh, buy that along with with the uh, the wide angle lens. Good. good any, spot. Other, any other questions? Yeah. No, it's uh, that was pretty good. Uh, Bob is right. uh, saying sorry he's joining late. What's the best camera for people who just want easy and don't want to mess with a lot of settings? And uh, you know I'll, I'll help you with this one again, Bob. Honestly, all their cameras. Um, they, that's the whole point of what they've done is really make it easy um, and, and a good price point and a great product. You know, your photos that come out of it just by having a few buttons and then the big piano key buttons like we talked about and they just work. They do a really good job right out of the box without a lot of learning. Now there is tweaking and as we talked about before, lighting and, and really getting close to your subject, some of the basics to help your mm -hmm. pictures progress. and. Like uh, Carl was saying, not shooting down on an image, shooting slightly up and just some of these other small tricks. But if you start putting a lot of that stuff together, you'll really start getting some good pictures. And most importantly, Carl will probably agree with me, just get out and start using it. You know, start pressing That's the button it. and playing with it all. 
that's how you get better practice, right? So, um, yeah. So the 2.0, I got to tell you, it's a very small, compact camera. So when people say I'm a beginner and, you know, I really don't want to bring, you know, they, a lot of people consider this a big rig. You haven't seen a big rig. You've seen one of these other, uh, you know, these other setups. But they like the compact design. They can fit into their BC or whatever. They just want to take, uh, you know, some photos, you know, quick photos. Yeah. Uh, the Micro 2.0 is great for that. But, again, uh, I don't know if you were listening earlier. I uh, had the old boat analogy. Uh, but you quickly find out, like, geez, I wish I – Wish I could get some. I, I like to shoot macro now. Well, now you would have to put filters on the 2.0 for that. Uh, whereas the DC 2000, you could it'll automatically focus down to uh, four inches. So, yeah, Brian is one. Uh, Brian's wanting to learn a little bit more about your flash. What can you tell us about oh. the flash? Sure. Well, the flash right here. Uh, this is the Sea Dragon flash. Okay. Um, <clears throat> It is a what we consider a guide 20 flash. That means uh, that's a power rating of the flash. That's actually a land-based power rating. But it has an effective distance of about five, five to six feet, depending on visibility. Uh, it'll come with this diffuser. You can remove the diffuser, and you'll get a little bit more distance. Uh, but what's also nice about this is that if you see, see this uh, sensor right here in the middle, that's our, uh, that's our automatic uh, uh, flash sensor. And what that'll do, uh, once you have that aimed at the subject, um, the light and you put the camera into the automatic. This is tough to see, especially because I'm not even showing it in the camera. But it's very difficult to see. You have a dial on here going from 1 to 10. Uh, 10 would be the brightest flash, 1 would be the lowest flash, and it also has an auto. So when you have it in auto, the sensor is going to read the subject, it's going to read the distance to the subject, either choke that flash down or boost it up depending on the distance to the subject. Very simple to use, very basic. It's universal to be used with anybody's camera system. It's going to come with the single tray, it's going to come with a grip, it's going to come just like this. Single tray, grip, and light head. What you're, wanting, you're, you're going to want to do, though, is add the flex connect arm. Because if you're shooting macro or if you're shooting wide angle, if you want to shoot macro, you want to get that, that flash right over the uh, lens of the camera. Once you get away from macro, it's about maybe a foot or two away. You want to get it away from the lens so you don't illuminate all the particles in front of there and get back scattered. And if you, so if it's you guys for, saw that... That flex connect system is awesome. How it comes together and goes apart, so you can really dial it in uh, for whatever you're you're looking to shoot that day. People love it. There's no adjusting of the uh, ball clamps, and once you oh, I got it perfect, and it goes bloop. this wherever you leave it is where it's going to stay. It's so easy. There's no adjustments. It's a fantastic system. I hope I answered your question there. Yeah, Laura was saying that, uh, you know, still on your website, it seems a little limited on some of the tips. Laura, uh, I know you're local to us. Come on over to the show this weekend at Our World Underwater, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Carl will be there. We can pick his brain. He can really go over it a lot sure. more in depth with you. Um, and, and Absolutely. That might be perfect for you. Robert is wondering Absolutely. what the battery life is of, uh, of the, your cameras. Uh, well, the Micro 2.0, remember, the Micro 2.0 is a permanently sealed camera. You don't open it. That that camera has a three-hour battery, okay? Never had any complaints with it, so it's a three-hour battery. The DC 2000 is about a two-hour battery, depending on if you're taking – if you're taking a lot of video, it may be – it might go down a little, but a mixture of photos and videos, you're going to get about two hours, but the thing is, with with uh, with camera equipment, with batteries, uh, I go of the old adage: two is one, one is none. Always buy a backup just in case. Yeah. Roger is wondering what the base price of the cameras is, and they start around four ninety nine. Roger, and uh, like we talked about, they got a lot of different packages. Whether you want to just get the camera, camera with a flash, camera with a video light, camera with both of them, and wide angle lenses, whatever you want, they we've got packages ready to go. Uh, feel free to call us or check out the website uh, as well. Laura's wondering about any updates to the app, the new app. Uh, 
The, uh, what do you mean, the Link123 app or which app? So that's what it is. I do guess that's an update. It has to be. I, uh, we did uh, we did do an update to the Micro 2.0 app, uh, and I would definitely uh, reload that app. Um, it is an update. Uh, we I think for the iPhone 10 or something, uh, people were having issues with it. Go figure. But uh, so we we had to update the app, and it's working seamlessly now. So yeah. if you having if you're having trouble. Reload the app off the Google, I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, Apple store, and uh, you shouldn't have any issues. Nicole has a DC2000 with two strobes and is with the Flex Connect arms and is wondering what the best way is to add a video light. And it's really easy with those Flex Connect arms. So take it away. Well, here, what I would do, and of course, that's the one piece I don't have, but we have a uh, Flex Connect cold shoe, cold shoe adapter. You might say, well, what is the cold shoe? Uh, a cold shoe, all of our cameras have them, and it's this little plug that comes out. Of course, you can't see it because I'm not holding it. Can I see it there? See that? That's a cold shoe. So we'll, we have this Flex Connect component that comes up here screws down on top of this so it's nice and secure and then using the flex connect system you'll be able to mount a light directly on top of your system okay it'll sit right on top of the uh of the uh, camera's cold shoe via that adapter so it'll look something like that <laughs> okay pretty lame i should have had the cold shoe but uh that's the way to do it and uh uh, people use that quite a bit because they a lot of photographers shoot with a dual flash setup and they need the light for two reasons one for a video but second is for remember what I said about the uh, your camera needs light to focus so if you're doing a night dive you'll need the light and if you buy the light I would probably buy that 3000 lumen light with the uh, uh, flash detection and the red LEDs uh, for night diving beautiful light yeah, it's really nice. Mike has a DC2000. And speaking of Mike, he's actually, this is the guy that left that camera on the wreck for a couple of weeks. But he's got a DC2000, and uh, he seems to have lost his red grip. Uh, the outer camera case has a red plastic insert grip. Ah. Lost it. Can he get a replacement for that and just glue it on? Do you guys have some parts laying around? Yeah, I'll see what you do, uh, you know, while flying. Or just, con I don't care, anybody can contact me. Uh, just contact me at email at k a r l at c life hyphen cameras dot com. Just tell me, tell me who you are and what the issue is, and I'll get back to you. Yeah, Mike, or but just make sure you know this. We can call you. We just steal one off. Or the call me on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Rich is one of the DC two thousand has zoom capabilities while it's in video mode. No, it does not. Um, it does not have zoom capabilities in a video mode. Laura, we are located in Plainfield, Illinois. That is where our store is, but you can easily find us conveniently at DiveRightInScuba.com. We are a local dive shop that also just happens to have a very big online presence, and we try to connect and do a lot of cool things for our customers, our viewers, whatever, like yourself. So uh, check us out, DiveRightInScuba.com. Give us a call, get us on live chat, Facebook, whatever. Wherever you are, we're probably there too, and we'd love to help you out. Um, bum, bum, bum. Craig, what lumen would you recommend for recreational diving on the lights? Well, you know, all of our lights are adjustable, so you go 100%, 50 25% power uh, on a, a recreational diving. Um, you know, we do have the 900 lumen light that we're uh, giving away. This is a fantastic I mean, this is a very small, compact light. It's 900 lumen, uh, very tight beam angle of 15 degrees. Uh, so for recreational diving, this would be your light uh, right here. It has the uh, power switch, your mode power button here. You hold it in, turn it on. You have 100% power, 75, 50. It also has 25 and it has a blinking SOS mode. In case you get uh, lost or uh, and it also you know it's good if you drop a tank if you're doing a tech dive you drop a tank you can put this light on there 
in the blinking mode and you could uh, find it later in the dive. So I'm gonna turn that off, just holding it turn off. Now this light goes for $9.99 and for $9.99 it's gonna include a charger and a 18650 battery. Good stuff. And right. somebody's gonna win that today here in the next Good. couple of weeks. So All right. uh, Nicole was wondering what light do you recommend? I think you said for her with those strobes, at least get the 3000 lumen because of the strobe detection. Yeah, I mean, definitely that, the flash detection, but it also has these, uh, what I call the stealth mode, which is the uh, red LEDs. Uh, that'll be a beautiful light for you. And uh, again, it does have that uh, uh, automatic brightness control mode, which I find quite handy. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I would go with the Sea Dragon 3000. Great choice. Well, once again, I think we're at the end of our segment. My list of. Uh questions we didn't even get to because thanks to all of you people out there you uh hit my list for me with your questions we thank you and uh augie how's the randomizer we got a uh, all right so we've got all the names in the randomizer let's uh let me get this open and get it on the screen now if you're new to joining into us the randomizer is how we pick the winner of this light so we are going to make that bigger and carl and i a little bit smaller here so without further ado we are going to spin the wheel and carl you want to hold up that fancy mini 900 all right, here. all right so one of you lucky people thanks for all the questions the comments uh everything that you guys have done if you have any more questions feel free to sneak them in uh, or you can reach out to us later here at the shop dive right in scuba um, but let's see who's getting this bad boy here on the randomizer Safety relief valve there. Nicole. All right. Congratulations, Nicole. You want a new light? Congratulations. Nicole, Augie will reach out to you to get your information and uh, where you'd like that light sent. We will get that uh, over to Carl, and we will get that out to you ASAP. Congratulations on, uh, on your surprise and your prize there. What a, what a good what a good. Congratulations. Win. All yeah, right. Yeah, so... Huh? Again, Carl, I really want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day. I know you're leaving in a day or two to come join us out here in Chicago. Um, and I appreciate you taking the time today to, to answer all these questions and, and really give some more insight into your products. Well, I appreciate you having me, Mike. Uh, and I think this is fantastic. Invite me back again. When we come out with some new products, we'll do it again or maybe sooner. There you go. Okay. You know, and thank you for everybody out there as well. Yeah, and just so you guys know, we have camera demos often. So if you're thinking of one, give us a call. We'll take you over to the pool. You can try it out. You can demo it. Um, you know, we've got lots of cool options and stuff for you. So thanks again from all of us here at Dive Right In Scuba. Glad to help you guys. And thanks for tuning in and listening to me mutter all the way through this. <laughs> See you guys take next care. Wednesday. we got another good lineup uh, next Wednesday and, and for the rest of the season. So stay tuned with us, and we'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one.